Hi, Sisrin here with another video and today I wanted to talk to you guys about Hardcore League and like surviving and just how to play Hardcore and, and why it's a different approach than Softcore. So this video is aimed at those that want to try playing either Hardcore Solo Cell Phone or Hardcore Trade League and uh, maybe they've never played Hardcore before and are just moving over from Softcore. And uh, there's a lot of big differences. So obviously on softcore the penalty for dying is pretty light. You lose 10% experience and you lose a portal so you could end up breaking a boss fight. However on hardcore you lose your character. It goes to standard and generally when you play hardcore you don't play standard. So for all intents and purposes that's the same as a character being deleted. There is one benefit however to it not being deleted is that you get to use it for testing purposes if you do want to practice a boss on standard instead of leveling a boss up on you know uh, ultimatum or something like that. Now, first let's go quickly through the campaign and just note things that are like pretty scary. Uh, Burtis is usually pretty fine in the normal campaign, but for Merveil you want to make sure you have Cold Rest. Weaver can be a little bit scary here in the Weaver's Chamber, so make sure you have um, just a decent amount of damage and life by now. And, and a good rule of thumb that we can mention early, 300 life per act is a pretty solid rule. Fidelitas and Chamber of Sins does a little lightning damage, make sure you have some lightning resistance and at this point you want to start thinking about getting 30 to 40 lightning, cold and fire rest and that's why a lot of people help Alira in Act 2 to get a decent amount of rest. Also, now that you're in Act 2, make sure that you're picking up a lot of blue items that you can vendor unidentified for transmute shards so that you can use your crafting bench to craft it's like 12 to 18 resist or something. And that's you can get resist capped all the way in Act 2. The Val Oversoul does lightning damage, make sure you have lightning resist. Other than that, Act 3, here we have like the most dangerous stuff is in the Lunaris Temple. Here you are going to meet like the, the titty bitches things, like the, the ones that shoot machine gun things. I don't know what they're called. Um, miscreations, tentacle miscreations in Lunaris Temple. They're very dangerous and so is Piety and Dominus. And at this point you kind of want to think about being at least 50 to 60% in all your res, ideally res cap. Moving on to Act 4, everything's pretty easy until you get to Comb and Dereso. Um, Comb and Dereso, uh, Dereso is Cold Res and Fire from Comb, and then you have Piety, which is just fairly dangerous on her own, and you want to have at least like 800, 900 life at this point, ideally maybe 1200, uh, and, and Malachi, obviously a fairly hard fight, and this is a good thing to bring up here, because especially once you are getting to this area, Decoy Totem is really, really good in Hardcore when you're playing it for the first time. You might have to Mule, which is a uh, bite on a different character, because if you're playing Witch, I don't know. I don't know what characters don't get Decoy, but not everything does get it. So you might have to make like a, a Marauder or something to get it. And I think it's just breaking some eggs, the first quest that will uh, let you get it. And uh, Decoy is really, really good because it focuses the boss's attention on something else than you. And really, really good for things like Malachi and onwards. Moving on to Act 5, here we don't really have anything dangerous until we get to the Chamber of Innocence where you have Innocence and this is particularly noteworthy in Hardcore. It's a really really good place to level up your character and a lot of people, honestly it's not actually bad going all the way to like level 50 or 52. If you're new to the game, this will let you basically just cruise through the rest of the campaign. Nothing should really really be difficult. Uh, and you can get to level 54 here and grind up a decent amount of like items and stuff like that. Sometimes there will be like league mechanics there like delirium. You might want to like at least until you're 46, 47 not do those because it can be fairly dangerous. Um, so hardcore is a lot about you know risk and risk assessment. Moving on to act 6. Gotta remember here we've taken a big chunk of resists. And I want to say already here in act 5 while you're doing chamber instance you want to make sure that your resist count. Don't, don't like, kill Kitava and be like, Oh no! I lost 30 resists this time! It's always 30 resists. It's not sometimes 10, sometimes 50. It's always the same amount, so make sure you rest cap before you do it. Um, afterwards it could be a pain, because it's not like you can just go one act back and not have the penalty. Then anyway, uh, do the Twilight Strand quest so you can buy every gem. Other than that, you'd have to do like the library one, which is a pain. Everything is starting to be fairly dangerous. You're sort of expected to be resist capped here even after the penalty and you'll take a large amount of damage. Mudflats can kill you and just everything going forward is fairly dangerous. Now once you get to uh, like you've killed the the Chevron Brutus combo that you will get to Prisoner's Gate and there will be Abrath here. Um, honestly skipping Abrath and the, the poison one here 
isn't a bad idea for later when you're new because you might have a pretty weak character at this point. Doing them later is, is very, very nice. Then you just have to worry about the Brian King. And a really good tip for this is whenever he does the Lightning Storm, you can just portal out, portal back in, and stand still. And Lightning Storm does no damage as long as you haven't clicked anything. Uh, moving on to Act 7. The thing I would skip here is uh, the Dread Thicket. Uh, well, don't skip the Dread Thicket, but skip the uh, the Bear Deer. The Gross Cult. And um, Gruus, the Gruus fight can be pretty dangerous as well. This is a good time to do your second ascension as well, and I might as well mention I usually do my first ascension in the Crystal Veins, second ascension after killing uh, Grust, and then we just move on to our Kali. Now we're in Act 8, and we're at the big stoppers of a lot of people in Hardcore. Dodri in the sewers can be very, very dangerous. I would very, very strongly recommend here in Act 7 at the Broken Bridge quest, the Silver Locket quest, grabbing a Granite Flask here, will make you very, very tanky. Um, normally what I will do for uh, Dodri is I will stay in melee range so she doesn't do her ranged attack, which has like three, four, it's like a burst. Uh, and it's like very, very big damage. But her auto attacks, especially with the ground up, very, very easy to tank. And then if I have a low damage character, I will leave uh, every time that my granite is down. And uh, you can click like the valve in her fight as well to make it easier. Other than that, not too hard until you get to Lunaris and Solaris. But the Harbor Bridge is actually a really, really good place to overlevel. You could get all the way to level 70 here if you so desire, and it wouldn't take you too long. A couple of hours at most, and then you'll be just crushing everything without worrying. Uh, if you don't want to do that, you can then kill Lenaris and Solaris, maybe overlevel a little bit, and uh, level more in Blood Aqueduct. Blood Aqueduct is actually insanely scary. Even though it's most people's favorite place to farm, there are revenants there and there are the tornado shot archers. And it's very, very easy to die to these. Granite fast and keeping that up permanently is your best bet here. And never standing in the big red beams that the revenants put down. But then, um, oh, and if you don't know for whatever reason, holding control down when entering an instance will let you make a new one. So you like don't have to wait for it to cool down. But farming Blood Aqueduct until you're level 72, 74 on Hardcore is actually pretty great when you're a new player, regardless if you're on Soul Safon or Hardcore. And you could farm here all the way till you get a Tabula Rasa. Just completely ignore a level and just go. If you do have like a Parandis Blazin or a Sedima's Touch or something like that with quantity on it, that will like increase your odds of getting humility by a large amount. So I definitely would recommend that. Anyway, when you are at the desired level, and some people do continue like 64 to 68, that's fine. But again, really do recommend like 72 to 74 if you're, if you're new to hardcore and you don't want all your progress to be wasted. And especially a good tip if you are on hardcore trade league, let's say that you are playing, you're playing freezing pools. You're playing the freezing pool skill and you are level 70 now. One of the biggest, or actually the single biggest upgrade you can get is just go down here, search for Freezing Pulse level 20, and depending on the league mechanics, sometimes it gives a lot of chaos, but also depending on the gem, sometimes level 20 gems are very, very cheap. Getting a level 20 gem sometimes can only cost you 2 or 3 chaos for a level 20 corrupted gem, and it is a huge damage boost. If you aren't sure how big it is and how much gem level really matters, on any spell gem, like anything that levels as a spell, so not like Reeve, not Cyclone or Last Rate, but like Elemental Hit, Caustic Arrow, Freezing Pulse, Fireball, pretty much any spell. Going from level 17 to 20 is approximately the same as going from a 5 link to a 6 link. So it's a very, very big difference and can cost you usually less than 9 Chaos. So I very, very much recommend that and then you can just crush through everything. Nothing really, really dangerous here until you get to the Rotting Core where you fight like the Malagnam, or however you pronounce that. Uh, of uh, of the three bosses and then we have here Vilenta can be really really scary but um, anything else than Kitava is even Kitava here isn't too scary I'd say that the scariest Kitava is the act 5 one because that has a very very like fast slam whereas the act 10 Kitava doesn't really have much that can kill you just don't stand in the fire and be ready to either log out or portal out and speaking of logout macro not everybody likes doing what doing that or using one but do remember that it is allowed and you can use it um, and it gives you, think of it more as like a skill shot similar to Life Flask is the best way of thinking of it. Now that you've killed Katava, I would also say the same thing as I gave for the Act 5 advice. Make sure that you are ready to take the minus 30 rest penalty because it's, again, the same. It's not going to be random, so make sure you're rest capped before killing Katava. And then you are going to be fine for mapping and 
sometimes the league mechanic can be really really good to farm in quarry for gearing the reason why it's really really good to farm in quarry is because the league mechanic is always in immediate proximity of the waypoint so you all you have to do is go here and then boom stand in those stone circles so they're always inside this little ring here they're like one screen within the waypoint every time and that's why you'll very often hear about people quarry farming because you can just go here and start doing it so that can be a really really good way to gear pre-map especially in like scarier events if you have like extra damage mods something like a gauntlet stuff like that and it can be really really good to get some extra rares get like currency like chaos orbs depending on the league mechanic this has been used in probably more leagues than it hasn't and sometimes there will just be like really really powerful areas during the campaign that are really really good um the reason it's so good as well is because you can reset it so fast and like directly go to the league mechanic without having to like finish the entire map and stuff and speaking of maps, obviously once you get to Act 10, you're going to have to do like the little mini quest to um, unlock the map device. Where Zana's like, oh no, we've locked them in the atlas, etc, etc. Go do questy quest. Um, yeah, here I got five fusings. Sometimes you'll get some chaos orbs, you'll get chromes, and a bunch of rares. It's really good. When you have completed the quest, you will get a map device in your hideout. It'll start out with only four slots. That's something you activate later. Don't worry about that for now. And Kirak will give you the Someday. choice of the quest. It doesn't really matter what you do at this point, but then you start mapping. And that's pretty much like Act 1 to 10 and, and like a quick intro there. Let's talk a little bit about some tips and tricks uh, for hardcore that are also very important. One of the biggest things, and I try to do this uh, very, very heavily from the level 24 to 30, 36. Um, and especially important if I don't have it by 42, is I try to roll an instant flask. Uh, so I would roll maybe on like, well, I can just roll one on a divine, but uh, what, what you really, really want, which is one of the most important things, is to get either a bubbling or a seething. That means that I'm going to use the orb of augmentation on pretty much any good suffix, uh, because all I want is this. This is the goal. It doesn't matter what the suffix is. It doesn't matter if it's poison, shock, freeze, bleed. Uh, bleed and freeze would be the best, but anything is good. You just want a flask that is instant. And the reason for that is Path of Exile very rarely kills you like, Oh no! I'm being slain! My character is in the process of dying! I'm popping my life off! I'm still dying! Oh no! I'm dead. Right? That doesn't happen. It's usually like, bump, 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 dead. So being able to like quickly react to that with an instant life flask is huge. That is going to save you more often than not. And that was my first death in hardcore because I didn't know you could roll a flask. Other than that, a granite and a jade flask is sick. I will use that on mostly every character. Granite is really good for all the white trash that is going to be hitting you. And then a jade is insane. It is probably the strongest defense mechanism we have against porcupines. It's very, very common to see people dying against those, particularly because if you are in a map with physical damage as extra lightning or something, then those porcupines are dealing huge spikes of elemental damage on top of the physical, and a granite isn't doing anything, and quartz won't really do much either because it's just 10%, but a jade will give you a large chance to dodge a large portion of those projectiles. So jade and a granite is huge, quartz is usually like, this is normally my like triumvirate or flasks, uh, my, my perfect trio, um, because now I'm getting phasing, which means that I can run through monsters, I'm getting armor, and I will even early maps, even if I'm on a uh, face acrobatic character, I will use it because it makes such a big difference against the, the, the large amount of white monsters. Granite isn't super efficient past like maybe tier five or eight maps, but it's really, really good against the white monsters. Obviously it doesn't do much against like rares, essence monsters, invasion monsters, or map bosses, but it is really, really good for all those small hits that you are going to be taking. And another thing that's really, really important on hardcore, you really do want to have a solid build. One of the big downsides to playing hardcore is you're a little bit more pigeonholed into what you're playing. You are definitely encouraged to follow a build guide of somebody you trust will actually give you a good build that is suitable for hardcore because there are a lot of builds that you might feel like very comfortable playing on software like oh maybe i only die once a week or once every three days and that might be acceptable to you on software but you really can't afford to risk die on hardcore so a, a good idea to think is that the character either needs to have it needs to have something like a really really high dodge you can play dodge characters if you're playing a dodge character you really want a large amount of evasion, like 15 to 20k, uh, max dodge and max spell dodge, 
and then you want to have something like a Kintsugi or a Bumble in with stuff like Wind Dancer on top of that. So when you do get hit, you don't get one hit. Uh, and that's really, really good. Definitely viable sense of defense. I've done everything in the game on that type of defense. Uh, another defense is going block. You can either go pure block with something on a Necro or a Gladiator, or you can go uh, Glancing Blows block on something else, like maybe a Trickster or a Templar. However, I generally only like taking Glancing Blows if I have a shield with life or energy shield or both on block. That makes it very, very strong because you're like the monsters are maybe not doing more damage than what you're recovering and and that makes you feel very very tanky another thing that's really really good with glancing blows is the crab aspect because if you block and take damage through the glancing blow that doesn't actually um remove the crab aspect so it is supposed to it does say here um crab berries are lost when you take physical damage from a hit that's not entirely true because it doesn't count through glancing blows so, kind of nice and beneficial that we can use that. Same with close shrouds. That's why a glancing blow is so strong on a trickster. Other defenses as well. You can go like really, really heavy into fortify effect and literally just tanking everything. Fortify effect is insanely strong. Uh, and there is a decent amount on the skill tree. But uh, champion obviously favored here since they have even more fortify effect. And then you can also get a lethal pride. And uh, the lethal pride can give you like up to like 50 60 maybe even more fortify effect if you're lucky and getting 10 or 20 is pretty reasonable and the number one defense on pretty much anything obviously phasing is huge because you can move through things but movement being always moving is huge and sometimes you can like notice that people are dying when they're standing still they just get bursted down because the game isn't anticipating that everything is actually going to hit you so if you are getting just like standing still and letting everything hit you, you are going to die. But this actually makes movement speed a very, very good form of defense. Being a slow character, you might struggle like uh, avoiding bosses and stuff like that. So yeah, definitely recommend having a decent amount of movement speed. Uh, another big tip as well is having something like, well, bone armor for necromancers or for other characters, you can have immortal coal, molten shell. And I have a separate video talking about all of like the guard seals and when to use them. But having a guard skill or a uh, enduring cry with call to arms on mouse button one and making sure you are taking advantage of your free auto cast uh, is very very good like i'm not like consciously going to be using my bone armor that's just popping on now and again giving me an extra burst of defense let's say like 2200 free life that is up and it's up for my minions as well so it's very very nice and useful Castle damage taken setups as well, obviously very important. Having castle damage taken immortal coal so that something is popping and saving you from being killed is very good. And hardcore, you really want your skill tree to have like at least 200% increased max life, or you know, you want to have really solid defenses. Uh, most of my characters have like 6 7k life with like either block, dodge, or really heavy fortify on top of that. There are more advanced defenses you can look into too, but that's not it's not something I really want to explain, explain to like completely new players because it's like transcendence and stuff like that. We have separate videos explaining like super advanced um, defenses. Another thing might be very, very scary, and that is once you're like getting further into the Atlas and stuff, how do you do bosses on hardcore? What if you don't have any characters and stuff to try it on? Well, on SSF, you're kind of fucked. You can either like hope that you have characters on standard. If you don't, you are going to have to go in blind. I would recommend watching videos of other people doing it. And it's a huge risk. On hardcore trade league, people will do boss kill services for you and stuff if you're uncomfortable. And it's very, very rewarding to be one of the people that are able to do bosses. For example, people are charging 8 exalts for killing the feared for people right now. And another thing I really want to talk about is rolling your maps. Uh, and I, I just want to particularly highlight what mods that I think are incredibly scary. Obviously, some are character specific, right? If you're a Cyclone character and doing fist damage, don't do a fist reflect map. If you're a spellcaster and you're doing elemental damage, don't do an elemental damage map, right? Things like that, obviously, very, very clear. However, some mods that I would always pretty much skip on hardcore, that is critical strike. Increased crit can very, very easily be the cause of your death. Um, and I generally always skip it. Monsters fire additional projectiles is the single most scary mod. Never for any reason whatsoever, for any reason, should you roll that on your map. It is nothing breaks the game quite as much because that makes that several monsters will shotgun and burst you down very easily. So whatever you do, never ever run a map with multiple projectiles. There's just no reason to. It is the best mod to reroll. 
Uh, players have minus maximum resistances. Very, very dangerous. Unless you're wearing a lore weave, you should also not be running this mod. And those are the three most dangerous ones. Some characters can rely really, really heavy on flasks. So like reduced flask charges can be really, really bad. Obviously, no regen and low regen can be scary depending on your build. Um, and if, if it is like two or three damage mods, uh, that can be too scary to run as well. So you want to be really, really careful that you're not rolling crazy much. Increased AoE can be really scary on some bosses. For example, Minotaur, the arena will fill up really quick with increased AoE. Be careful about what maps you run. But honestly, a lot of hardcore is learning from your mistakes. And uh, I just wanted to make a video that's like, hey, if you want to try hardcore, here are some tips. Here's what not to do. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Let me know if you're going to try hardcore. Obviously, there will be a gauntlet later this week. It's like an event I do and we'll have more information on that in not too long. But I hope you guys are enjoying all these videos. Thank you so much for all the support. Sub if you like the video. But more importantly, try to die less than I do.